Hello and welcome to another training video for Enlight POS powered by Dart. Today we're going to be taking a look at the batch history module and this module is mostly used for voiding batch payments. So in a previous video we looked at the payment history module where you could void an individual payment. Um, if you're working from the billing section, maybe you have a very large master account and you apply a check that might cover hundreds of invoices, going back and voiding them one by one isn't really practical. So with the batch history module, you can go in, look for the batch payment that you created and void it out from that level. So that's what we're going to be doing today. To start, we're actually going to take a look at the payment that we're going to be applying and how to void it out. So let's go into our back office section and then head into billing. And I'm going to use my billing filter to just look at stuff that's happening today. This is our test system. There's there's a little bit of junk information in here. So I want to make sure that we stick to what's happening today so that we don't get confused. Um, and we're going to filter to our account. So we've got the Avengers Inc. This is a master account. And I'm moving very quickly here over the billing module. There is a series of videos dedicated to the billing module. So if you're a little bit lost in what I'm doing here, go back and take a look at those videos so that you understand how to use this module and then come back to this one so you can understand how to avoid the payments that you make in the billing module. So I'm going to take a look at the statement so I can show you what's going on with the Avengers account. So here in the statement, we can see that we have four invoices that need to get paid off. So we have Tony Stark, Pepper Potts has a couple. Here's Jarvis. This is the amount that they owe us. So we're going to come back to the customer list and we're going to apply a check for all four of those invoices in one batch. We're going to say this is a check. We're going to say that the number was check one, two, three. And then I'm just going to go ahead and process payment. So the payment has been applied and now the balances are all zero. So if I go back into the Avenger statement over here, we can see that the statement is still there, but now the customer owes us nothing. So the payment was successfully applied. All the balances are, are back to zero. And let's go take a look at this payment from the batch history module. So we're in the back office menu right now. In fact, I'm going to go all the way back to the main menu. To get to the batch history section, you're going to go back to the back office where we just were. And over here on the bottom right is our batch history button. Don't worry about some of these other buttons over on this side. Some of these you won't have available in your system. That's okay. It's normal. As we go through setting up the system with you, we will enable the different modules that you might need. So don't worry if you're missing buttons. This batch history button is available out of the box. So you'll have this one showing. If we go into batch history, this is going to load into a search screen, very similar to payment history. If you've been through that video, we're going to look up the Avengers. So here are Avengers Inc. We have two entries, and this is the one that we're interested in. This is the one that we did today. But first, let's go through what's happening on this screen very quickly. So this is a customer that we're working with, the Avengers. Very similar to payment history, we have to and from billing dates. So th these date filters are going to determine the payments that show up on this list. It defaults to the previous 30 days. So if you're going to look for something older, just remember to come back and adjust your, your date filters to wherever you're going to go. I'm going to do something a little bit strange because I only want to see what happens today. So I'm going to say from today to today, today is 1230 and we're going to search payments. Okay. So now we have our one entry. This is the, the check that we just did. And silly me, when I was putting in the check number, I said that it was check one, two, three, and really it should have been check one, two, three, four. So this whole batch I want to void out. Before we void out that batch, let's go through and, and see some of the information that the system is showing us. So this is the created date of the batch. So this is the date that the payment was recorded. The amount that was paid. So all of this amount was applied to different invoices. And we'll see that in more detail in a minute. The total in. So this is the amount that the person entered when creating the payment record. In most cases, 99% of cases are going to be identical. And we're going to look at when they might not be in a few minutes. These are the amount of payments that were made. So we had seen on the statement there were four invoices. So there were four payments made. This is the store where the payments were applied. This is the employee who created the payment entry. And then the log, which we're going to get into in a second. So first, let's look at the payments that were made. So if I click on this little button here, 
I can see the four payments that were entered. So these are the four invoices that have the payments and the total that was applied. Down here, we have store credits. So if there is an overpayment, which is what we're going to look at the next time we apply this payment, it would show up down here. This is the method and the status. So over here, I can print this out. If I click on this, it's going to print to the to the invoice printer. And then I can hit go back and we come back to our payment record. Over here, we have some very similar information. We have our log and most of the time you won't need to come into here. It, for you, it shows very similar information to what we were looking at the other screen. So here are our payments and the total amounts that were applied to the different invoices. Down here, we have that same section again showing store credits. In here, there can be a little bit more information. For example, if you are working with an integrated payment processor and the payment fails, sometimes in this message and these log details, you'll be able to find a friendly error message for why the payment failed. There are easier ways to see this, but this is another option where you could find the error that the payment processor returned. Not all payment processors provide a friendly error message. So this, this may be there for you or not. It just depends on your payment processor when a payment fails. Okay, so now that we've gone through all of these fields, let's go back in here and now we're gonna avoid this batch because I messed it up. Remember, I needed to put one, two, three, four and I only put one, two, three. So let's void this. I click on the little void button. It asks me for a reason. I say test payment. And then I'm gonna press void. Then it says the billing has been set to void. This little success message may take a little longer for you to see. If you're voiding a batch payment and there are hundreds of invoices in that batch payment, the system is going through and voiding out all of those payments individually. So sometimes it'll take, um, I don't know, it could take a couple minutes depending on your internet connection, but you'll get this success message. You don't have to wait for it. The system is gonna be working on that for you in the meantime, so you could navigate away to a different area, but the system is going to be processing this batch request for voiding the payments. Okay, now that the payments are voided, let's go back to the billing section. And we're gonna look up our account again. We're gonna set our billing dates to today. And we can see that the state, the balances are back. So these are the same ones that we looked at before. After we applied the payment, they were all in zero. Now they're all back and the customer owes us our money again. So the payment batch was successfully voided. Of course, you don't have to go back and double check it. I'm just showing you what it looks like. So let's go back to this customer list and we're gonna apply that payment again. So we're gonna set, we have our dates, we have our balances. I'm gonna apply the check again. And this is the payment date that the system will record. Again, this is all explained in the, in the billing module series. So I'm gonna select check. This time I'm gonna say one, two, three, four. And this time I'm gonna say that we received an extra $100. So I'm gonna, say that we received 1437.06 instead of 1337.06, which is what they actually owe us. You can see that over here, 1337.06. Now I'm gonna hit process payment. Payment was applied, everything was recalculated. Over here, we took that extra $100 and we applied it as available credit for the customer. Let's go back and see this in the batch history module so I can show you. So here in the batch history module, all I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to today so we can only see the entries that happened today. And then here we have the payment that was voided previously. So it says amount paid is blank because we voided that one. We have the, the invoices, everything that we had seen before. This time we have our new payment record and this one says 1337 was paid. The total in is 1437 because I had said that they overpaid by $100. And if we come into these this payment section here, it's gonna show us the same amounts that we had seen before applied to the same invoices and the 1337.06. Down here, it's gonna show us an available credit of $100 and the method was it was a deposit because they overpaid. So we didn't have any open invoices to apply this, this these $100 to. So it's sitting there as credit for the customer to use at a later time. As we did before, we just go back. We can look at similar information here in the log. If we scroll all the way down here, we see the same information. There's the, the deposit of $100. There's the payments for the four invoices and their total. And that's pretty much all we have to cover for the batch history section.
So as we mentioned, the key difference between the batch history module and the payment history module is that in payment history, you're going to be voiding payments one at a time. In batch history, you can void hundreds of payments just by voiding the payment batch that they originated from. So that's what we did today. We talked about navigating to the section. We talked about searching. We talked about the screen layout, what all the columns mean. We navigated to some of the different subscreens like payments and the log, and we talked about those. We applied a payment. We voided the payment. We applied an overpayment and saw how the batch history section records that. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. I hope that you learned something new. And from everyone here at Dark, thank you so much for your time, your attention, and especially your business. We'll see you on the next video.